Okay, we are back on the Ultimate Sports Network as we see Tito, Felix Trinidad, and Golden Boy Oscar De La Hoya. Um, this was billed as the fight of the century because it was three months before the end of the century. Gee, yeah, that's how about that? I don't know. You see behind me, I have the Hollywood, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as a tribute in a sense because Oscar was all Hollywood in a, sen- in a way to a lot of people. And, in a, and unfortunately, that kind of hurt him because I don't think a lot of time people realized how good he was. I didn't realize it either until before this. But as you watch in this fight, the man could really box. And he, he puts on a cl- clinic. I'm just 21 years since I've seen it, Frank. But uh, I remember that he just boxed beautifully. And you see circling to his left here. And Trinidad's trying to land one of his bombs. But Oscar, he's another guy that I think sometimes gets underrated because people tend to remember what happened to him later in his career, the Manny Pacquiao right. thing. But at this point, this Oscar De La Hoya, he's a really, 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 really good fighter. Yeah, well, Frank, you already know my my, my spill on De La Hoya. <laughs> I was one of his biggest fans at this point. I, I thought he had all of the, the moxie. I thought he uh, perhaps was one of the true technicians. He had the ability to adapt and uh, – to fight somebody like Trinidad and then uh, try to kind of contain him for what he wants to do really spoke volumes to me. And uh, like I said, De La Hoya, as you can see, the one-two punch, has that ability to stay away from his power, uh, showed me a lot early on. And I just like his style, like I said, because this is more or less his adaptability. He could box or he had the ability, enough power to knock you out if he had the opportunity. Well, and see, I'm the one of the few that wasn't a huge De La Hoya fan. I, I'm not sure what it was about him that I disliked, and I'm not sure what it was about him that I could have liked. He just, to me, didn't seem to be that guy. The, the Hollywood part of it, outside of the ring, had nothing to do with it because he, didn't, to me, didn't fight like that. But as I'm watching this fight, I'm seeing more of things at this point that I didn't see before, the head movement, the, the, the boxing ability, the, 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 the elasticity, you know. I always thought he was kind of like kind of boxing, just came in and did that, and, you know, and maybe I didn't want to like him. I don't know. But so far, so good. And, you know, we were all happy to see Trinidad fight, you know, 15 title defenses and all that, but he's going to be right there to be hit. And another power puncher that didn't look powerful, so... Let's just see how it plays yeah, out. Yeah, and the other thing I think, Frank, is that Oscar De La Hoya, with all the success, all the greatness, all the gold medal success, it almost seems like a guy who was caught between two styles. You know, it was like he wasn't ever really sure. You know, how many trainers did he have during his career? We're getting right. ahead of ourselves here. Well, but watching him here, he's just really smooth. I mean, he's mm-hmm. showing you right off that he – he looks very comfortable as the boxer puncher to me. You know, later in his career, he, he wasn't exactly that. He went away from that. But as you could see, he did not look like a guy that was trying to fight a style that really wasn't him. He was at this weight. He was, and when he weighed 135, whatever, he was really light on his feet, a really good athlete. He had a heck of a jab. And I know what you mean, Frank. It took me a while to, to sell to sell him because for them to sell because the Hollywood thing is because I, he was getting a lot of opportunities that other guys weren't. And I wasn't as convinced as they were, but like I said, by this point, he's 31 and 0 with 25 KOs. I mean, he could really, he, he, he could pretty much do it all. Uh, and you'll see it in this fight. I mean, he, except later on, we'll see some maybe choices that weren't exactly good ones, but <laughs> the first number of rounds, he's just, he's boxing. This is he puts on a clinic, basically, is what I what I remember, and I'm seeing it again right here. Well, this is what we mentioned we were going to try and do off camera is going to be hard for me to run my mouth and then do the graphics at the same time. So I don't think we're going to be able to add that part. We were going to try and have our scorecards on at the same time, but I'm not that talented, so we'll worry about that later. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, well, I mean, when you look at it, the other part too that maybe I, I was a big. De La Hoya fan, as you watch him box Trinidad, is the factor that he there's really nobody he didn't fight. That's one right. thing I liked about him. You put him out in front of somebody or you mention it, you're like, all right, I'll fight that guy. Like this Trinidad fight, I mean, you look at the way he's moving and boxing and standing around. Fights that he really could be what we would call injured and could be hurt, he took him. 
That's right. why I have respect for him from that standpoint. And you're like, you really sure you want to fight that guy? Y'all fight him. And, and Trinidad was coming out. He was known for the ability to hurt people. But that jab Oscar's using right now, taking his time, kind of getting settled, it just showed you at, at some point what he was capable of early on. And he's a lot quicker than he looks. Hands, feet, head, all that. He doesn't, again, I, I don't know why I have this bias. He just doesn't look to be that athletic to me, yet he performs like a pretty strong athlete. Yeah, and you see George Foreman, who used to say some wild things sometimes on HBO, but then he would say some things that were right on. And you would say when he used to say when Oscar is bouncing, like you're seeing here, he's in a rhythm. Yeah, and that's exactly right. He is in a, he's almost like a dancer here, not a dancer that you're thinking of, but a guy. Let's see that little move. He's he's right. he's in a rhythm. He he knows what he's doing. He's got a plan. He's ducking. He he's pairing. He's he's his jab is on point. Trinidad can't touch him. You know, that's the thing. I mean, he's not dominating, but he's outboxing Trinidad and he's and he's doing a little bit more to win these rounds. See, I, I the first round was very close, Frank, since you brought it up. Maybe that the last flurry Mundy gave it to Oscar. And then this round, Trinidad did a little better in the beginning, but in the last thirty seconds, it's Oscar. So at least one to one or two oh and and uh, uh Oscar is, is really displaying his skills here. Well, it, it seems to me, and you mentioned it in a, in a way, I think Oscar's feet are a step ahead. Not necessarily everything else, but like you said, he's, his feet are dictating what's going to happen. He's anticipating with his feet what he's going to have to do. The footwork right now is phenomenal. He gets in, he gets out. As soon as he sees Tr Trinidad, Trinidad try and load up, he's out of the way. He plants himself and throws when he wants to throw, you know. Right now, it's all the footwork. My favorite thing, Frankie gets off first. Right. Uh, Charles's thing, he's crafty. You know, he's he's doing it. He's he's like I said, he's putting on a clinic, right, Charles? Yeah, yeah, he is. I mean, and I would have it 2-0 right now. Yeah, uh, doing the third round because he's uh, using his jab real well, and that he's using the jab to protect himself as well. Because we saw early on in this round, Trinidad was trying to load up with that that uppercut. You know, those hooks. And De La Hoya stand just far away enough to be safe, but why he's also countering by, by uh, with his counter punches. Yeah, in this round, you see Trinidad appears at least from the first two minutes to up the ante a little bit. You know, he's a little bit more intense, a little bit more aggressive, trying to punch more, putting a little more pressure on on Oscar, throwing more punches, and that he's he's doing pretty well in this round. Right. Wow, nice little left. But foot. Oscar's blocking mm -hmm. most of the punches. Though. Most right, yeah. yeah. Oscar's lunging out, trying to keep him at bay. But as you said, Trinidad's coming forward a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. And and you remember, Trinidad was a knockout artist. He's knocking right. out everybody, and he everybody, was scary right. in that respect. But he was also. As this fight shows a little bit, obviously a little one-dimensional. As far as I don't know if that's fair to call him one-dimensional. If he couldn't move like, say, Oscar does, he, he just can't. You know, you only are what you are. And and uh, ooh, look at that. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, he's doing what he he's doing what he is. Charlie Frank is talented. He's doing what he's supposed to do. I'm not supposed to. He's whoa. Oh, he's yeah. doing. He's doing what he does. He hadn't lost, so why is he going to change anything? So uh, it's just Oscar. I'm going to use that word again. I, I get tired. Of, I never get tired of using it, Charles. He's just craftier. <laughs> he's just got more. That's all. He's just got more, a little bit and, more. Wow. And you mentioned, mentioned something very important. They're both undefeated going into this into this right. fight. Um, Trinidad's made 15 defenses of his, of defenses of his belt, and Delahoy's made eight of his. So. One thing that I noticed uh, for Trinidad is, as I've reviewed some of what he's done, and Charles, you can attest to this, Tito Trinidad is going to be Tito Trinidad. Mm -hmm. You know, he's going to do him, which is fine. It's proven to be very effective. De La Hoya is going to do what he needs to do to win this fight, this round. 
this whatever. And and maybe I should show a little more appreciation than I do, but that's what he's going to do. So if he's got to get in and slug, he's going to get in and slug. If he's got to brawl, he'll brawl. If he's going to have to dance, he's going to have to jab. He, he does what needs to be done, and for him to still be undefeated is still pretty impressive. So he makes his adaptations where Trinidad just says, here I am, deal with it. And right now, Oscar's dealing with it better than Felix is. Yeah, he is. I mean, that's from that standpoint. And I think that in that third round, um, I had Trinidad probably leading early on because he was the busier fighter. But I think later in that round, when you saw the combination of, of uh, Oscar and snapping his head back a little bit, I probably would have uh, definitely gave him that round because I think he won the round late because I had a hard time trying to give it to Trinidad. But uh, – he uh, proved me wrong, and I think he earned enough to, to win that uh, that round. So I have it uh, three three up so far, as we even know we're in the four. Well, if I had been looking at the tail of the tape, or just by looking at them, I'm going to assume that Trinidad has a longer reach. But I'm watching it, and his jabs aren't getting home, and Delahoya's are. Yeah, Oscar really had a good jab. He really, really shows it in this, in this fight. And, and yeah. uh, um, I mean, it, like I said, it's on point. I mean, he's he's hitting, he's tattooing a, a Trinidad consistently. I, like I said, he, he it sounds like an Oscar Dolloway tribute show here, but it's not supposed to because Trinidad's getting closer and maybe even touching him with right hands here. But this is just a guy outboxing another guy. It's, it's right. actually pretty simple for him. Uh, Oscar's just faster. His hands are a little faster. He's getting off mostly first. Trinidad's more of a slugger, and he's trying to hit him with that right hand or the left hook. And Oscar moves to his left, moves to his right, gets in, gets out, jabs. I mean, in a sense, it's like we we say about Lomachenko a lot of times. It's kind of beautiful to watch. I mean, and it's, this is like this. This is what the sweet science. You see that? Triple this up is on the jab, the, right? Yeah. Jab. This is what the sweet science is about. The part that people forget. This is this is a work of art in a sense that he's. God, it sounds like people are going to think we're getting paid here by Oscar De La Hoya, but <laughs> it's a fact. I mean, he's this is the sweet science, and he's shown it. Well, Charles, you said something earlier, which I think is, I don't know if ironic is the word we want to use, but it seems to me, you said, you know, Oscar didn't duck anybody. He didn't, he went out, whoever he had to fight, he fought. Oscar the promoter, and I'll just leave it at that. Anyhow, so it appears as if, that's, that's later in life, right? We'll worry about that yeah. later. But um, it, we're at the end of four now. Shut out so far? I Shut think out so. or three to one at the most. If you want to yeah. be uh, uh, nice, you could say three to one, but easily could be 4 0 right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going 4 0 for me because of the fact that uh, it seems like Trinidad is loading up. He's waiting to get an opportunity to drop that big hammer. And I'm not sure if that's happened yet. So uh, the fact that Oscar was able to elude him, even though I'm watching it again, I would be for I would go yeah. on my car four zero. Harold Lutterman gave that one to Trinidad. I I give that one to to, to De La Hoya. Yeah, the round before I might have gave to Trinidad, so I might right. say three to one. But that last round, in my view, I don't know how he gave it to, to Trinidad. I thought Oscar won that round, so three to one. Uh, yeah, I mean they're they're close. Don't get me wrong, but it they're just, close. Yeah. But John, as as you said, he's just he's doing what needs to be done in a better way. Yeah. And as Charles said, it looks like Tito's just waiting to load up and hit that. Even that jab is kind of you know. There's one he threw. I've seen a few of them. He's just he's trying to slice him off the top of his head, hoping to get Delahoy to move to one side so he can blast it. Yeah, and nothing against double Trinidad. Jab, this jab. Oscar at this at this point would have given anybody, anybody. I'm talking even uh, Floyd Mayweather. If, if he, this had been this Oscar, it would have been a hell of a fight between this Oscar and Floyd because uh, Delo is younger, he's faster, he's fresher. Uh, uh, and the guys nowadays, I mean the welterweights nowadays, this this Oscar would have been hell. Yeah, because he could also punch. Remember, he had twenty-five knockouts and thirty-one mm -hmm. wins. He's not displaying the power here so much as he's flashing what else he can do, and that's what's impressive. Is he was not one-dimensional, right? I think you're absolutely right on. 
Also, too, when we were talking about in those earlier rounds, to me, De La Hoya was just doing more of it. He was more busier. He was landing more punches. Look at that. Like, yeah, boom, a you bit. know, one, two, three. Yeah. yeah, it's just like, okay. And, and my thing is, if you're landing more punches, then you win the round. I mean, right. granted, I mean, Pretty simple. Trinidad, yeah, Trinidad is trying to make some power, but he's not landing enough punches for me. And, and I think that's why so far it's been a shutout. As we're like 35 seconds left in this round, I'm still waiting for that Trinidad combination. Well, there there are two ways to win a fight. You win more rounds or you knock the guy out. Well, and other stuff, cuts and all that, but, but you know what I'm trying to say. So Ooh, yeah, what, yeah. what we see right now is that Delahoy is like, I'm putting rounds in the bank. I'm going to take yeah. care of business this way. It's a 12 yeah. round fight. I'm not going to get with any bombs. And what I oh, think we're seeing yeah. from Trinidad is I'm going to load up and hit a bomb. Right. You know, so I'm it, a, it's yeah, I'm a, kind of the same. Yeah, and also, 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 Frank, Charles, the other thing is that scoring fights, I, I'll, I'll hear it all the time, even last weekend with Taylor and, and Pursoon. Well, Pursoon was chasing Taylor. But she wasn't doing anything. She wasn't hitting Taylor. I mean, that's always that argument about the aggressor versus the boxer. You could say that Trinidad might be a little more aggressive, but who's landing more punches here? Right. See, that's the thing. And it's Oscar De La Hoya who's landing more punches. See, I wouldn't have agreed with Letterman there no, either. I would have gave either. the last round to Oscar. So no. it, it's one of those deals. Okay, maybe he's a little bit more aggressive, but then there's that other comment, who would you rather be in this fight? Pretty obvious who we'd rather be. Who's in control of the fight? Right. There you go again. Trinidad's trailing, you know, stepping behind, stepping behind, stepping behind, and De La Hoya is in control of the fight. Right. See, th this it is this is the the De La Hoya Pernell Whitaker fight. De La Hoya may have been more aggressive, but he wasn't landing any punches. So, right, you know, right, exactly. I, I think Purnell was in control of the fight. He was doing what he wanted. Del, he was making De La Hoya do what he wanted him to do. You know, yeah, Trinidad's that's, really picking up the pace now, though. Yes, yeah. he's, he's hitting him with a few punches now. And wow, Oscar, comes Oscar. Oscar. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And in that four or five punch combination, Trinidad didn't throw anything. Right. And I think a lot of people get caught up in the fact of that because, as you mentioned, he's coming forward, he's chasing him. That's considered an aggressor. But like right. you said, if you're not hitting anybody. You can be a, you can be the walking aggressor. Right. Without, you All know, you without, want. Yeah. Right. It, it's got to be effective aggressiveness. And he's had some effective seconds or moments in the fight, but mostly it's been, I mean, all these cliches. There's that other one, Frank. Charles, the ring, who, yeah. the ring, ring general, yeah. and it's well, obvious that it's Oscar who's, who's who's the general here. If we pay attention a little bit, and I don't want to get technical because I'm I don't know boxing that way, but it seems to be on occasion that his uh, Trinidad's footwork is orthodox, but his balance and his angles are almost as if he's fighting southpaw because of the way De La Hoya is moving him around the ring. So he's not even really sometimes lined up right. So his leads are off, basically. His his left foot is forward, but he's almost in a right-hand lead position. Yeah. yeah, and you can also see, guys, real fast, why Oscar admitted later that he got tired. Because he's, he's, he's exerting a lot of right. energy during right. his fight. You see that? He's moving, he's bobbing, he's ducking, he's punching, he's winning. But you could see why later, I mean, look at this. 50 punches more landed according to, to that punch stat. Um, so you, you could see why. And it is, look at that eye. Look at that left eye. Yeah. Oscar's really working uh, hard. He's, he's really boxing. He's very busy. You could see why rounds eight, nine, or whatever, he's a little tired because he's really putting in the effort. No but doubt. now Trinidad's Body like, shot. okay, yep, that's I was going to say, right. So I'll slow him down. 
That's the way to slow him down, right? Go to the body. I'm surprised he didn't try to do that earlier. I, he might he might have tried, but I didn't I didn't see him land anything. Yeah, I agree with you. I didn't see him getting this close either. Now he's starting to say, "Okay, I can take your punishment. I'm gonna stand here right with you." Now I'm coming and, for you. I, I had it after six. I had a five one. Yes, and it's it just as Charles said. Now he's closing the distance. So he now is. that 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 jab and that right hand lead aren't so far away. Now he's look. You can see that the that range is a little bit closer now. He might catch yeah. one, two, or here, but he's he's on top of him more than he was before. How do you? He's going to make. That, a, I wonder. Fight. Yeah, he's going to make Oscar fight. But remember, like I said, Oscar had twenty five KOs and he had a great left hook. Right. So he was trying. He was taking more chances because he had to. I would imagine his corner was telling him, "You're losing." And you got to take some more chances. You got to try to see. They look at it. He really loaded up on that left hand. Uh, you got to you got to come after this guy. And he's, he's coming you're after blowing him. it, kid. You got to go after him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yep. And this gets late, so you definitely know that they have to make moves. Right. Definitely but he, but him. but he's still stalking him though. He's oh, yeah. still he's still looking for the bomb, which is well, what he does. That was his so, style, right? And yeah, that was that was Trinidad. That was. Wow, I mean, later on when Trinidad fought Roy Jones, Roy did something like this. He didn't move around like this, but he just completely outboxed him. I mean, it was right. later in their careers, and they might have been a little slower, but. Roy Jones really had no problem with him at all. He just completely outboxed him. Well, I'm maybe starting. That, oh, so good. I said maybe that has a that that has a familiar ring to it. That you know maybe if Roy Jones saw it that way, maybe Ross, Oscar was on the right path. You know. Well, yeah, <laughs> Oscar exposed Trinidad. Oh, good right hand in a sense here. He showed how you can beat him if. Mm -hmm. You can do this, and you can take his punch. Look at that. Oh, wow. Oscar's yeah. doing the old trick, trying to steal the round in the last right. 20 seconds. Yep. And, and that was a good round. That was a really good round. Oops. Oh, and he still, he still, uh, but he's like, uh, you know, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. See, he's okay. I didn't mean it. They cut him off because he turned it out. I was like, oh, I'm cool. He was going to hit him. He was going to yeah. touch yep. and Say, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Look at Oscar. Like, Y'all just do it. Let's go. Uh -huh. Now, no I, as we've done this series in the last month or two, I'm beginning to d detect a pattern. And for most of the fights, correct me if I'm wrong, You have, the, the, I'm going back to the Arguello fight, and then we made some reference to Arguello and Marquez even, that it's the guy who's straight up, gloves up, right down the middle, doesn't like a guy throwing from angles with a lot of movement, a lot of this, a lot of that. It makes him look kind of stiff. Even though he's in quote-unquote prime boxing position, there's a new way of, or a different way of doing it. And he's only going to hit the guy that's in front of him, whereas in the Aaron Pryor Manny Pacquiao mode, De La Hoya is hitting him from angles, from sides, up, down, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow, combinations, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you, you're right. You're right, Frank. And uh, it isn't always like that because right. uh, uh, Lomo is kind of that way, but he loves angles. And But people who fight him don't like that. So you, you're right about that, that guys that can do that uh, come at you different ways, awkwardly or whatever. That That isn't what you see very often. You can, you, you can work with somebody... And you mentioned Roy Jones, who threw from weird and awkward positions, but he was so fast he could get away with what he wanted to get away with. So that's kind of a little bit of what I think we're seeing now. Yeah, that's true. And Delaware is still, is, I mean, he's still busier. He just is. Right, right. You know, you, so you see Trinidad trying to come for him. But he's either missing, and he's not landing. He's not landed that punch. We've been waiting on it. 
waiting on that big punch and it's not come through. But De La Hoya is like, okay, I'm gonna stay on my bicycle, move around a little bit. And I think maybe uh, as we look at it, that is confused as to as being busy in action. But again, to me right now, and he's through these eight, it's, it's, it's a De La Hoya clinic. John mentioned earlier, I got seven one. I could go. I could go as far as six two, maybe, but I agree with the seven one. And we've got John frozen up on his end. But we'll get him back here in a second, hopefully. And we're looking at the numbers. You know, it, it it looks like from the numbers domination. I don't know if I go as far as to say that, but it looks like it's a pretty good Delahoya lead. Now again, we've got rounds left to go. Yeah. It's the ninth round and everybody's excited. Delahoya's down by nineteen. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can bring John back into the mix here. Some kind of way. Trinidad's aggressive early in this ninth round. Still looking for that shot. Hitting him hard. Body shot. De La Hoya counter. De La Hoya again to the body. Boom. Oh, my goodness. One, two. There we go. Two the there body. we go. Two to the body. Three to the head. Still punching. De La oh, my goodness. De La Hoya to right. the body. Makes you wonder. Well, he, he just happens to be a little bit quicker on the trigger. Right. And now Trinidad is swinging for defenses. Right. He, he Again, he almost feels like he has to now. Wow. Tap, tap. And he's back. And Cal Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Walk to me. Are you okay? Walk to me. <laughs> really? I thought it would unfreeze, but it, it didn't yep. do it. It's global warming. It's so warm outside. I'm sure. But see, look, even even when he's, and again, I we have a tendency, I think, to go. All right, we know how this is going, and we're this is you know this is how it's going, and this is how we're going to see it, but. In reality, I think that, you know, no, Trinidad's put, putting up a little more of a fight. but Because he's behind. He because he's behind. But he's still not landing a lot to me. You know, and Delahoy's doing less, but he's still doing enough. He's busier. Yeah. And I, I, I just don't see that these punches that Trinidad is, is throwing are really, you know, Really doing it's a lot of. Look at that. It's almost too bad in a way. Well, it's almost almost is is the main word here. And Oscar, from what I I did check out something before this, it said That's Oscar. Cool. Every day, every day this fight haunts him. It's all it, it, it's it's all, that word again. Almost because it looked like that if when he stopped a little bit and if he had sit down, sat down on his punches, he might have he might have stopped Trinidad. You know, because he was right there, yeah. he was hitting him. He wobbled him a couple of times. Yeah. And if he had really tried to. He might have done it. Well, it, it looks like he's landing. I don't say it will, but he's landing more than Trinidad is, and Trinidad's punches don't seem to have a lot to him. Now, I, I'm going to go into this saying that I like Trinidad leading up to this. I like what he did. I like the way he went about his business, you know, and just because of what he's doing now. Now he's got a little wider stance. He's trying to get a little more oomph on what he's doing, but because he, he has to land stuff now. Yeah, nice and touch Oscar's like, he's, he's trying he's to, him. yeah, he's trying to hurt him now. Right. But it's also because Oscar's not doing as much either. So right. it's a combination of the both. And I think it's a combination of what you said, John, that, okay, he's not hurting me with anything, Trinidad's saying for Delahoya, so I might as well take a little risk because he hasn't done anything that's hurt me. 
He's just yeah. just trying to land and, and keep busy. Now, Charles, uh, Harold Letterman gave that last round to Trinidad. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I can see that. So we're in 10. I, I'm 7-2 right now. That's where I am. 7-2. Yeah, 7-2. Yep. So it's going to be interesting as we're here in 10 that uh, he's still coming even more forward and more aggressive. And, and doing uh, more now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe it's because this is a point where Oscar's not doing as much, but we're at seven two and we're we're in round ten for me anyway and John I think. But uh, asking what is we have to see what else Oscar's going to do for the rest of the fight. I think this is a telling observation of what we see and what uh, the judges saw previously. So that's 65, is that the math? 72, yeah. 70, right? Mm-hmm. See, he's 65. not, right, he's not, he's not, I'm talking about Trinidad. These are the rounds that he swept, uh, I, I think, if I remember on the right. cards. He's not dominating here. Oscar's not running like he's always been. He's moving like he's been doing the whole fight. It's just that, that Trinidad's throwing more. Basically, is what you got. He's just throwing more punches. Uh, he, he's well, he's been jabbing a little bit, but you see, he's just it's and he's fighting like a guy who knows he's behind. That's what I I think it is. His corner's probably telling him, "Look, you're behind in this fight." And then, now he's I don't want to say at this point even that he's winning the round, maybe a little bit, but it's a close round yeah. that I've seen. And I didn't remember that when I I thought that Trinidad won the tenth round relatively oh. easy. At least just now, okay. So he's winning the round now because he just he hit him with some shots at the end of the at the end of the round. But Oscar oh, wow. fighting back, you know. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. So it wasn't like it was a blowout here in the tenth round. I'll, I'll I'll put it this way. Here here's what I think it is. Trinidad's doing more. Delahoy is doing less. Yeah right. I said yeah I said that. Yeah that's exactly what it is. See he's now he's all motivated now. He had a good round Trinidad. Right. So he's like he's pumped up. He's thinking oh, okay, I'm going after this guy now. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, with that being said, I'm 7-3 right now. 7-3. 7-3, yep. Now Trinidad is going for, for the for the home run. Needs a knockout. Feeling real good about himself because he felt he won that last round. Beating his chest and everything. Yeah, you, you love that line, Frank. Uh, um, uh, you're blowing a kid. I, I was thinking yeah. you almost want to say, why don't you fight this guy hard, you know, with La Hoya, you know? I mean, because I, I don't know, looking at it again, Trinidad was pretty set up. If Oscar had just stopped moving and just said, okay, meet me in the center of the ring, I mean, it's easy for me to say, obviously, a murderous punch for like Trinidad. But he was landing some of those shots. It would have been very interesting to see if he could have, because he wobbled him, you know, he buckled his legs a couple times. Would have been interesting, because Oscar had a very good chin, if you guys remember. Right, and, right. Uh, uh, I wonder if, if uh, uh, he might have might have been able to stop him late if he had tried. He obviously was not in his mind. He was outboxing him, and that was the plan. And here he was told he was ahead. Just stay on your feet. You got this one in the bag. Right. Big mistake. Yeah. Well, I, okay. There, there are two two things I think about what you just said. That if I'm in Delahoya's camp, one. I'm De La Hoya. I've gotten decisions. I've gotten whatever. I'm home cooking. I'm in Vegas. I, they they like me. I'm the golden boy. Two, right. I've been dictating this fight. Look at those jabs. I've been dictating this fight the entire time. I don't want to get hit with the big bomb. And I'm ahead. Comfortably. You know, I, yeah, but I that's, a, that's true, but, Frank, but that's assuming. You can't never assume, assume sure. in boxing. You're assuming, and that's dangerous. Well, and, and we know that, except for I think there's a we little bit of... We know that. Hindsight uh, is 2020, yeah. 20, right. But I, I, but I think there's a little bit of, of ego involved in here. It's like, you know what? I'm cruising. Yeah, kid, you are cruising. Don't get caught with anything. Like right now. He's not even attempting to engage, for the most part. Because he's, you know, when I do, it's I can do whatever I want when I want to. Yeah. 
I, mean, I can see that. But I mean, as you say now, Trinidad is more aggressive. I think the dance, run, the dancing. See, I don't call that running. I call it moving. Adjusting. Yeah, me either. It's run, not you know, running. Run, running is getting all the way around. Even though Trinidad is more busier, I still say it's it's not running. It's being more. It, it's being smart. Active. Yeah, I mean, right now I get at the Trinidad, but it's still seven four, still seven four for me right now. Trinidad's all feeling good about himself, and it's really only because Oscar's not doing as much. It's not Trinidad right. is doing a little bit more, but it's also because Oscar thinks he's got it in the bag, right. and and he's he's boxing less, and 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 well, he's he's actually punching less. Is what he's doing. Right. He's moving right. around like he has been. But I agree, Charles. I think that's legend. I think. How that that mm. gets in the lexicon of, of sports about athletes, you know? Oh, he ran in the last round, or he wasn't a very good defensive fighter. And then you watch the fight, or whatever, or, or even a baseball a guy wasn't a very good defender, of baseball in the outfield, and yeah, maybe the first couple of years, but he improved. But people don't remember that here. The lexicon being that Oscar ran the last, he's not running, no. he's boxing. He's just not no. punching as much. That's that's the difference, right? And, and two, you would think that. Uh, you would want Trinidad to be engaged more, to be able to, you know, like hitting there, but just to be able to do more damage. And if he's not damaging him, which he is right now, he's, he's landing more more shots, but you just don't give it to him like that because it's not, I don't think it's, it would have to be a major round for significant damage for him to kind of speed up on or jump bump up on the, uh, the scorecards. Well, and I'm and, not seeing that damage. And, and how often do we hear – Stay away from him, kid. You got it one. Stay away from him. You got it. It's that's what you do when you've got to fight in the bank. You yeah. don't get in there and engage with the guy if you don't have to, especially someone who has has the the power and the pedigree that Trinidad has. You know, if you if you know you've got this fight one, or you assume, like you said, that you've got this fight <laughs> one, you're not going to sit down on on a punch and no, you're going to stay away. You if I give away this round, like like you said, Charles. It's still, you know, seven five, eight four. Yeah. Now, if you in want your to mind, running, if you say he's running, I'm gonna say the twelfth round. You can say that a little bit. He's moving See, a lot. Not yet. I mean, I'm not saying if you want to say he's moving and not throwing around, yeah. just trying to stay away. But he's not punching. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. So I'm gonna give you that one on yeah. the twelfth round. For those that say that, the others. He's not yeah, but I'm gonna give you that. If that's what you want to say. Round 12, we're watching it right now. The last minute and 15 seconds, he's been moving around, yeah. just staying away. And punching, but survival. not moving. He's yeah, he's survival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah he's, he's not on his horse out of fear. He's out of, on his horse out of, let's not get hit this round. That, yeah. Like you said, this round. I wouldn't say that for the rest of the rounds, though. No, no I agree with you. I mean, I used to say to people that if you want to say that, then Muhammad Ali was a runner. A right, lot of the exactly. time during his career. I mean, because he was a boxer and he would stop and punch and then move away, move away. Okay, so you're calling, you're saying Muhammad Ali, the greatest, was a runner? Give me a break, man. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, right. see, he like thought that. he won and, and I thought, we thought he did too. Yeah. The, the only thing, now they rarely do, I, it seems like everybody's learned that you, you don't take the last round, especially for granted. You, you, you go out and fight the last round hard. You're right, Frank. You do tell a fighter, don't get caught with anything stupid. Don't. But again, and this is hindsight, it's dangerous if you think, uh, if you're so sure that your fighter's got it in the bag. Now, the way we watched it, we might have been saying the same thing because we would have said, hey, you won seven rounds at least. Oscar, you got it. But well, that's. So who do you blame here? Well, I'm just. I'm going to give the, the scores, okay? Uh, 114, 114. I'm not going to throw the judges under the bus, but 114, 114, 115, 114, or, uh, Trinidad, 115, 113, Trinidad. So, you know, and Har Harold Letterman had it 114, 114. The AP had the score, the fight 115, 113, De La Hoya. Was it as That's close right. as all that? I don't know. I don't uh... know if they'll go that far. Uh, Maybe seven rounds to five, right? We had seven yeah. rounds to five or eight I rounds could, to four. I could like do that, that Delahoy. I could do 115, 113, Delahoy. I could 115, do that. 115, 113 sounds yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah, I could even go 116, 112. I mean, I don't think the Trinidad did enough 
to win enough rounds, but I also don't know that De La Hoya did enough in the tail end of the fight he to did. win all those rounds either. So, yeah, he did. you know, yeah. those, those could have been nine nines or ten tens or however you want to put it. I don't know that. See, here, here's the thing that I, I wonder. You can have a draw at the end. Can you have a draw in a round? It's a 10-point must, but what if no one won the round? I they, rarely have seen a score that way. 115-114, wasn't that a 10-10? Wasn't there, didn't somebody do a 10-10? Um, let, me, let me double check and see. Because that, that, that would, would make indicate. sense. Yeah. Maybe the first round? Look in the first round. No, no, no. They're they're all ten nines, nine tens. Oh, they are. Okay. Yeah. I don't know where they got one fifteen, one fifteen, one fourteen. You're right. That doesn't make sense, does it? I'm no math whiz, but no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh well, we'll have to do some investigation on that, uh, and do some long division. But the the concept <laughs> of the whole thing is that now here's what I'm gonna say. And I hope I don't contradict myself, which I do all the time anyway. What I'm going to say is going into the fight, going into my take on Oscar De La Hoya, he <laughs> wasn't going to win this fight. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but just I'm predetermined that, that Trinidad's going to win the fight. So as I'm watching this fight, again, for the, as you said, the first time in 20-some years, I'm watching De La Hoya be a better boxer ring generalship, all that stuff. De La Hoya, I won't go so far as to say dominated the fight, but he did more, as far as I can tell. I don't know that the Trinidad did enough to win enough rounds to be the victor. Maybe a draw? I don't think so. But having said that, in my opinion, De La Hoya, as the pundits have said, he did take his foot off the gas for the last half of the fight. And he could have picked up another couple of rounds easier than maybe we scored it for him and could have won it, you know, maybe even by another three or four points. I don't know. Um, I think he won the fight. But that's just one man's opinion. Yeah, and, and real fast, Charles and Frank, you know, De La Hoya was, was fortunate a few times. You know, the, the I Corte fight was really close. He got the decision. Mm -hmm. I thought he won it. The Felix Sturm fight... I actually thought he lost that one. wasn't in good shape, but he got right. the decision because he they were going to fight right. Bernard Hopkins, and there was no way that he was going to lose. Right. Uh, the Shane Mosley fight, the second one, I thought Oscar got jobbed in that one. I thought he won. Mm. I thought he Mosley won the first one, no doubt about it. But right. I thought Oscar Dolehoy when when I was smiling and watching that fight, I'm like, God, Oscar's going to get him. And I remember even Mosley when they announced he was the winner, he went. Wow. So to me, let me see those scorecards, right? Yeah. And that way you go well he in the Pernell Whitaker fight, right? Ah not even close. I thought Whitaker, I thought Whitaker not, won that not fight. Even, I did. Not oh, even close. Right. And it was it was a good fight, but Whitaker just did what he did to Trinidad in a sense. He just outboxed him. So he was fortunate and then he was unfortunate. So I right. guess maybe that's how you live with yourself. You go, well, I got lucky a few times, but maybe you could say I got up, but it all kind of evened out in the end. And if you're in the game long enough, that's going to happen. Charles? Sure. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I thought De La Hoya won this fight 7-5. Uh, I, I don't think it was a draw. Uh, I mean, I, I'm really even more convinced now, 20 years later, 21 years later, because the, the so-called running aspect, as everybody mentioned, I only really saw that in the 12th round, if you want to say that, him moving I'm a lot. Right, you know, moving a lot, yes, yeah, moving a lot. Then instead of concentrating on throwing punches, but I don't think that it was close enough to give it a draw. I think you did him a disservice by that. Uh, John, you mentioned too about some other uh choices. Uh, like you said, I thought he won the uh, the uh, the, the, the sweet pea fight, I thought he did, I thought Oscar did, but that just we all differently. Well, you know, Frank. <laughs> And and you choked because you thought that uh, Hagler beat Sugar Ray Leonard. Anyway, but that's another story. But my I thought Sugar is, Ray won that fight. So. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, when, when you when you look at it too, um, as you mentioned, that's that's the game. And and different eyes yeah. have different uh, you know different opinions. You put then you have your eyes see one things the others may not. And even when we watch it again, you look at it and you go like, oh wow, 
like the Pacquiao uh, Marquez fight. Now I look back at it, I said, I, I think Pacquiao won that fight. Yeah, he won. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, but two, the other thing is, there are those, there are pundits that say, Oscar beat Floyd. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, he didn't know. Yeah, I said, you're crazy as hell. I'm like, I'm, I saw that in person. And yeah. for every, if you call holding and hitting as counting as <laughs> point, then yeah, I can see your point. But the clean shots were one way or another. But I think it comes back to, as you guys said, that depending on your style, the styles that you like, depending on what you consider clean shots. The, again, I say this, and I said this from the beginning, from the some of the fights. I think the way that even some of the judges, even they will never admit this, the way that some of the judges expect fighters to perform decides how they uh, vote or how they see the fight. And I say that uh, with no hesitation. The perfect example was this fight. And I think the other, because they thought Oscar ran, didn't do enough or whatever. And the other fight, of course, was Marvin Hagler versus Sugar Ray Leonard. They came in with a preconceived notion, in my opinion, that he was supposed to punish this pretty boy. Pretty boy who would seem like be on the other side of the career, and he's supposed to hurt him. And not that didn't happen. And that, I think primarily it didn't happen because Marvin Hagler went tried to prove a point to beat Sugar Ray at his own game. And, and I think that hurt him. Granted, I'm just one guy, but I think that hurt him. But I think if he would have came out with the same intensity that he fought Thomas Hearns, now that's the fight I wanted to see. Right. I wanted to see him coming after Sugar Ray Leonard, not smiling and, you know, all this and all that crap. I wanted to see him with the same persecution that he came for Sugar Ray Leonard. And I think getting back to the point, it's just the eyes and how the eyes see it and the perception and some preconceived notion as to how you expect certain fighters to perform in a ring against certain styles. Well, if if you are not a fight fan, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. Go home. You shouldn't be watching this. But if you are not a fight fan, you don't grasp the beauty of this sport. You know, get all the blood and guts and all that stuff out of the way. The, there are two things that this comes down to, and we mentioned it during the fight. It is a subjective thing. And as we talked to Max DeLuca a few months ago, he said, we try. He didn't say we do. We try to block out all of those things, you know, previous rounds, previous fights, previous times we called, we were in the fight, any of that stuff. And as Charles said, it seeps into there. You're human beings. You're expecting to see something, and if you don't see it, you're not necessarily sold on that's what it is. Now, the good, the great judges, yeah, they, they are able to block all that out. But even Max said, you know, because I said, maybe it's better to watch the fight at ringside with earplugs in. He said, you know, that might not be such a bad idea. You get swayed by a lot of stuff, and you're only human. It's going to happen. So you have that aspect of it. It's being judged by human beings. You have to perform at a certain caliber to sway the judges. You know, that's a good thing. The other part of it is you can take the judge's decision out of their hands by knocking the crap out of the guy and knocking him out. So there are two ways of going about it. So if you don't think you're going to get a decision, and and I've said this in a number of times, I, that's the, 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 the example I have is Glenn Coffey Johnson. You know you're not getting a decision. It's been proven time and time again. So you got to come out and knock somebody out. Well, if you don't have the punching power to do that, you got to rely on the judge's decision. So maybe you study the judges or you study what the judges are looking for and you fight that way. And in this particular fight, in my opinion, De La Hoya fought the way that it didn't look as undefeated welterweight champion, eight-time defending champion, the way they wanted to see that fight. And I could be completely off by that. Whereas Trinidad was steady throughout, did what he did, did what he always does, other than be able to land a big bomb and knock De La Hoya out. So, and I'm putting words in the mouths of the judges, but 
it seems to me that, as, as Charles said, Trinidad fought his fight the way he always fights his fight more than De La Hoya did. And maybe that's what swayed the judges. I don't know. You know, Frank, I also think when you have a super fight like this, because if you remember, a lot of people complained about this fight after it wasn't that good of a fight, it was boring, nobody hurt anybody, nobody knocked, you know, as we saw, Trinidad was buckled. Uh, he never landed any, he, well, he did. He landed a few shots on Oscar, but again, as we know, Oscar De La Hoya had a really good chin. He never hurt him. Uh, what hurt Oscar, uh, in a sense, was the way he fought, like you said, Frank, uh, and that's unfortunate because, you know, you, you have a plan, you want to win, and you do what you're supposed to do, you think or not you're supposed to, you, you follow your plan, you, you should win, you should get the decision, but with these super fights, we've heard it a million times, when a super fight doesn't live up to what it is, what you think or what fans think it's going to be, like to say uh, Lomo and Lopez coming up here in October, not really a super fight, but pretty but, close. Yeah. If it's if if Lomo just outboxes him over twelve rounds and wins a decision, people are going to be moaning about it. Mm -hmm. So it's just the it's the essence of boxing is this sense. Yeah, you know, on one hand, like I've been going on and on, on, you got the sweet science part, but then there's other people that want to see some pain, want to see some knockouts, want to see some knockdowns, want to see that. So people didn't pay all this money and pay the to, to pay per view to watch a, a, a boxing exhibition. You know, Floyd Mayweather used to get complaints about the same thing. He would just outbox guys uh, later in his career and win easy decisions. But the thing was is that if you, and you know this, Charles, and I know this because I went to a few of his fights, when you were there watching him, saying that it was boring or whatever is really, really wrong because right. what he did was what we were watching earlier. Uh, Mayweather was like an artiste in there, you know. I saw him on. I, I saw him uh, with uh, 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 fight Guerrero and Berto, and I saw him uh, uh, fight uh, 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 some occasionally tough fights. And Mosley, when he got buckled against Mosley, that was like whoa. Someone but hit him. He, yeah, it was shocking. But but he was so good he's like a, he's like think of it this is a, a well it fits with my poster he is like an actor who's so good that you never catch him act right that's how good he is and that was what floyd mayweather did and that's what oscar de la Hoya did here he he made it look in a sense especially in the first eight rounds or so easy so when when somebody does that with floyd we use Floyd back to floyd again ah the guy's a bum which i hate you never call a fighter bum ever. Right. But you, you so you you criticize a guy like Floyd because he's dominating, but he's that good. What do you want him to do? Bring his bring his skill level down to give you a better fight. So sometimes I guess my long winded point here is sometimes you just can't satisfy everybody, and it is what it is. We'll edit some of that. We'll be okay. <laughs> I, I agree with you on that. I mean, John, I look. I agree with you on that. I've always said the problem that to me people had with Floyd Mayweather when he wasn't knocking people out as he got older was he made great fi fighters look regular. He made them look average and regular. You like were, Marquez. You were, yeah, you were looking for them to come in, do some great things. Um, and, and, and Canelo, the same way. You thought he was going to come in because he was younger to do this and that. And Floyd was like, okay, I'm going to fight you and meet you where you live, and I'm going to make you look regular. And people hated that. They hated that because they wanted somebody to mix it up. Even when he fought Sugar, Shane Mosley. Shane Mosley rocked him. And everybody's like, oh, oh, oh. And then, of course, Uncle Roger was like, all right, we're about to get this MF. We're going to show him what time it is. And we're going to put we're gonna put this lesson on him, which he did. And, and Shane had nothing to say. But that was Floyd Mayweather. And I think early on, that was Oscar De La Hoya. Like when he fought Trinidad. He, he, he made him look average. There was nothing special like, oh, man, did you remember the ninth round when uh, Trinidad dropped him with that left hook? That was never the case. Not even close. Yeah, Oscar's problem was he started to stay on that bicycle and move a little bit, and it cost him. But from what we saw today, again, I, I saw it once, and I said here again today, 21 years later, there's no way in hell he won that fight. There wasn't right. even yeah. a good yeah. In my, well, in my opinion, it yeah. was 7-5. Delahoy. Totally well, agree. If we, 
if we look at and unfortunately due to due to time constraints, we're moving forward in this. But uh, due to con- time constraints, because I don't want this to be a three-hour show, that we cut out in between rounds, and unfortunately, that's when it had some of the comp box or punch stat numbers as well. And if you if we go back and were to post those, we'd see that it was at one point it was like a fifty-point differential. Like a hundred and what a hundred to fifty six or something like that. I think it was like a, he had a hundred point, a yeah. hundred punch advantage by the end of the yeah. fight, right? Something right. Like that. Yeah. So, you know, and again, that doesn't necessarily mean that you were the better fighter, but in this case, it does mean that you were the busier fighter because we're saying that you didn't even fight, or they're saying they didn't even fight the last few rounds. Yet he still had that big advantage. So, you know, again, I. I the judges make their decisions, and we have to live with that. That's not a problem. But I think in this one, as we were talking of the fight of the century, and, you know, I don't think it was boring. I think it was a heck of a fight because of what we were watching. Two different styles and a guy that said, this is what, how I'm going to win the fight. And, again, not having been a De La Hoya fan at that point, he did what he needed to do to win the fight, and I thought he won it handily. Yeah, and it's too bad, real fast, that they never fought again. That that's the biggest disappointment to me. They Oscar said he wanted a rematch. Trinidad said fine, but Don King and Bob Arum or whatever could never get together again. Put and that's well, I'm mean, a big shocker. Uh, it, that's really the boxing. The boxing fan, they hate each other. The boxing fans lost because yeah. I think the second fight would have been different in a sense. Oscar would would have fought the same, but then he probably would have taken more chances because, as you said in the beginning, Charles. Oscar De La Hoya fought everybody, so if you're if you're questioning his balls, you're making a big mistake here. So he would have been boxing, but I think he would have stopped on a dime and punched more because he didn't. He's not going to have that happen again. And he's certainly not going to cruise in the last few rounds. So a second fight, pure pure speculation here, we might have had a great fight. I mean, this was a good fight. I agree with you, Frank, but we might have had a real great fight because Oscar's like, I'm not going to let that happen again. I think he would have done the same thing to a certain degree. He'd have been winning. But this time he's not going to cruise in the last few rounds. Right. Trinidad think he's winning. He's putting his glove up. That would have made me yeah. mad. I wouldn't have been thinking, right. you're not winning this round, what, man. What fight were you in, right? What are you getting so excited about? I had to get mad at him about that. So so uh, that's too bad. The, the boxing lost in that respect that they never fought again. But Oscar's on the comeback trail, uh, Frank. So maybe, the wheel, maybe we'll get it. <laughs> maybe we'll get it anyway. I heard he challenged some guy from Ohio. Some guy, Charles, somebody. So that might be his first comeback fight. So Prince, Prince Charles Williams is that who's going to fight? Yeah, Prince Charles Williams. <laughs> Are you <laughs> Is he still alive? <laughs> as far as I know, yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things. You go, okay, well, yeah. In a rematch, he would have, he would probably would have fought kind of the same fight, but he couldn't have fought the same fight because that's how he lost it. So he would have had to have sat down and throw a few more punches. And, and, and engage a little bit more. So you're right. It would have been more exciting because that would have put him right there where Trinidad could have let him up a little bit. So, yeah, it would have been interesting to see. I I don't know. And, and that that is part of the, as, as we've espoused on the beauty of boxing, also part of the problem is that we don't have or we have all these different governing bodies and, and all these different people. Well, that's the WA belt and that's the zone and that's this. It's all coming from so many angles that when we deserve something, we're not going to see it. You know, in the NFL, if the <laughs> – I'm just going to say it because if the Lions and the uh, the Titans are the two best teams, they're going to end up somehow facing each other. You can't get away from it. If the Lions and the Cardinals are the two best teams in the NFC, they're going to end up facing each other barring some upset. But you have to play to get there. Here, we have no idea. It's like we said last week. We had a, dub, uh, a welterweight title fight between two guys that I have no idea who they were. Now, I'm not an expert like you guys are on boxing, but I have an idea. And if there are two guys fighting for a title at welterweight, I should at least have heard of them. And if the casual fan I know hadn't heard of them, and I'm not sure who they are, you know, wait a second. How, how did this come to pass? You know, I'm not knocking them. If they get a chance to fight for a belt, fight for a belt. But, and I'm not to get on my high horse or anything about, but this is one of those things where you go, we could have had a rematch match here pretty simply. 
Because at the end of this, you're saying, okay, here are two things we can look at. One, Delahoya thought he won. Ah, he got jobbed. Two, Trinidad won, but he doesn't want to hear all the mess about how Delahoya thinks he won. He's still undefeated. He's only got one loss. There's still belts out there. You have the fight of the century. You have the fight to start the next century. All kinds of stuff you can do. Seems like a no-brainer, doesn't it? Yeah, and no brains were used. So. Yeah, no brains won the won the whole thing. Yeah. So, you know, again, we can rail on this as we railed before we even started the show this week. But uh, I, I think again, <laughs> we're doing pretty well. Um, I'm looking at where we can go from here. Uh, looking at our viewership and the people who have talked in, uh, called in, or at least written in. Um, you, People are liking what we're doing, but we need okay. to up our game. We need to up our game. Up so, our game. Yeah, that's that's what you do when you're successful. You get better. Okay. So, and obviously the the knucklehead trying to work the scorecard thing didn't work. So, you need to fire that guy. I don't know why you let him stay employed. He's the but, engineer. Um, get out of here. <laughs> but it was a good idea. He just doesn't know how to operate the machinery. Um, what's the fight, guys? What's the fight? What are we missing? What's the fight that's going to grab everybody by the short hairs and go, yeah, okay. Let's Leonard Hagler. Us. Leonard Hagler. You, you, we want to do that one? Do that one? Uh, I want to watch Ali Frazier one again because the, that, that 11 to 4 scorecard now, obviously everybody knows I like Muhammad or love Muhammad Ali, but 11 to 4 was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Frazier won. But 11 to 4? 11 to 4. Yeah. No. All right. Let, let, so, how about you know. something? How about something a little more recent, Charles? You say recent? Uh, yeah. Last ten years may uh, not have been a fight of the year, but something we went. Oh yeah. I had to think about that because all I can think about when you was talking about uh, Leonard Hagler, first thing came to my mind was uh, even though it's older, is uh, Leonard Hearns. Okay. Yeah. That's that's yeah. not a bad one. That's a that's great a, one. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. And if you're thinking about something newer, Frank, this popped in my head because we're always talking about him. Maybe we could watch uh, in the, in the near future. We can watch Sean Porter and Errol Spence again because that was a hell of a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I like that too. I I was thinking Porter and Thurman to tell you the truth. Yeah, that that's was a hell another of a fight one. Too. That was a hell of a fight. Because we keep hearing that whole point of uh, Porter being the first guy to. to you know, right, put right something back on his heels. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, and and, I, and Porter Porter looked really good last weekend. Uh, just right. real fast, uh, he beat a, a guy that didn't have the right. Here it comes, corny joke of the week. Right formula to to <laughs> compete with him. It's popped in my head right now. I'm just so witty. I blow myself away sometimes. Where is but, that uh, mute button at? Yeah, I know, really. But the the point is that Porter said, "I'm still here." Right. I'm still and relevant. To me, yeah. to me, I mean, obviously we all like him, but he showed a variety of styles like he does every now and then. And I thought, man, you you are more than just here, bro. You are looking good at 32 years old, yeah. and, and yeah. he yeah, is a, right. always going to be a problem for anybody. And he showed it again in that fight. He dominated, mm -hmm. and they and I didn't like how some of the reporting was on it because it said he mauled his way to a 12 round decision. Not true. He didn't maul his way. There goes that misnomer thing. He boxed, he punched, he did everything. So, yeah, Sean Porter, he looked real good. Okay, and I, I've got one more, and then I've got a question. Um, I also think that it would be worth I know we did the round uh, last year, uh, Diego Corrales, Jose Luis Castillo. We could do, I think that would be a good fight That's to true. do. That's um, true. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. Of all of these supposed great fights and great things that the Ring Magazine and the BBWA and all these fights that we were looking at, give me a couple of guys that we we just go, wait a second. We, we, can, we kind of have forgot about, even if it was just a short span of maybe two or three fights, someone where we went, why are we not thinking about this as either the great fight or a, a guy that we needed to see? And I'll, I'll throw one to start with. And uh, it's Arturo Gatti versus Ivan Robinson. Mm -hmm. That's I I think because we we didn't see a, a career arc for Ivan Robinson, we kind of forget that that was a hell of a fight. 
That's that's one of them that I see that I, I wouldn't mind taking a look at. Twice. Twice, Twice uh, right. Yeah. Right. Mickey Ward, you're talking about Gotti, made me think of Mickey Ward and, and Emmanuel Burton. If you right. really want exactly. to see a great Another fight. One, right. right. That is a tremendous back and forth. Gotti and Roulette Ruelas. Five rounds of hell is another <laughs> great one. Um, you know, you, um, we could go back and watch Salvador Sanchez and uh, uh, Nelson, the professor. Nelson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great yeah. fights. Those were from the 70s. I mean, that mm -hmm. was from the 70s. But yeah, I tell um, you another fight I would love to see just because we were in another, uh, you know, we, we were so enamored, I guess. And we had a love fest one way or another. The fight I would like to see, I think, and, and I and I have another th quick thing for you, John, uh, about Sean Porter. I have a question um, to both of you guys after this. I would like to see Alexis Arguello and uh, uh, and and Boom Boom Mancini. Good fight. I like good fight because we okay. we we've been on that that day look. We've been at Arguello, the mix, the mix. I want to see him in a different light, and I think yeah. he deserves that. I think he deserved that because he was, the, and I think it brings to light how great he was and how impressive he was what Aaron Pryor did. So I'd like to see that fight. I guess my other question, though, for both of you is, John, you mentioned about Sean Porter, and I watched the fight, and, you know, I looked, and, you know, some people were down on him. When I watched him, I was kind of, I mean, I love Sean Porter because when you come to the big fights, he's always there. I mean, he's shown us lately that, he deserves all of the accolades and all the respect. But I guess my question when I was watching that fight, I'm thinking, are there some people out there that are saying, did you do enough? He did enough to win, okay? But I guess to con be considered one of those greats. And when I watched that fight, I was kind of wondering myself, yeah, he's dominating this guy, but it's like, and even, even in the corner listening to his dad, his dad was like, he's going to, the guy's going to say he survived and he's okay with that. So I guess my point is when you have opportunity against guys that are lesser known or may not be on your level, is it hurting Sean Porter in his quest for greatness and respect by not just KOing or destroying an opponent like he just had? You first, Frank, or me? Go ahead. I was just going to say, the, the problem is, Charles, is that Sean Porter has never been a devastating puncher. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking the same thing when I was watching. It, he should have, if you want to be that way of thinking, should have got rid of this guy in about six or seven rounds. Mm -hmm. But formula, Sebastian F., he had a good chin. He took a lot of punches. But again, Sean Porter has never been, he's only had 17 knockouts. He's mm -hmm. never going to be, it's kind of similar in a sense, not that he's there, but to Andre Ward, who who didn't knock people out very often. He stopped them late, but he only had 16 knockouts and 32 wins. So when you're when you're a Sean Porter, you're never you rarely unless you fight somebody who guys somebody who's way way down there. And this guy was undefeated. He only had eight knockouts. So that's what I was thinking too. That's the only thing that hurts him. I never would think of being. Brutally honest, I would never think of Sean as being a great fighter. I would always think of him being a very good fighter. But that's really been his handicap, if you want to call that to me, is that he's not a dynamic puncher like, say, Errol Spence is. So that hurts him in these kind of fights because you think, he's fighting this guy I haven't even heard of. He should get rid of him in four or five rounds. He tried, Charles. You saw it. He tried to stop him. He hit him with everything but the kitchen sink. But the guy, the guy was hurt. I thought they were going to stop it a couple of times. But that's the brutal nature of boxing. When you don't have that big, heavy punch, it's going to hold you back a little bit. But see, the way he beat him up over 12 rounds, again, was kind of a clinic. Even though the guy obviously wasn't in his league. He was below him. But that's Sean Porter. That's how, how he's always been. I saw him fight in L.A. And people thought he was going to stop something years ago. And he won a 10-round decision. And people were all disappointed. But... If you don't have that dynamic punch, you don't. It's just the way it goes. Right. Well, uh, the other thing that hurts Sean Porter is when you start rattling off welterweights right now and you start rattling off guys that could be champion, should be champion, were champion, can get a title fight, 
you rattle off what seven, eight, nine guys if that that can fight at that weight, right? Spence, Crawford, Mikey Garcia, yeah. Danny Garcia, Pacquiao, Thurman, Pacquiao. Porter, blah 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 blah. You got five, six, seven Crawford. Yeah, you got seven, eight guys, right? Right. It's the same way as we've talked with Reverence about the age of the heavyweights back in the seventies. You have to differentiate yourself between them because there's another one around the corner that people, well, Shavers didn't do this. Lyle didn't do that. Norton didn't do that. Holmes didn't do this. Or wrong error, I'm sorry, but you know where I'm going with that. You know, he didn't look good enough, so he doesn't get the next fight. He's on the back burner. He's got to cycle back around again. For Sean Porter and having lost against one of the big guys, he's got to circle back around. Actually, a couple of big guys, but you know what I mean. That it's like, okay, he has to look fantastic because there are three or four other fantastic guys out there. That's not his fault, but good that's point. that's good, good for point. us. You know, that, yeah, we can criticize him because it didn't look as good as maybe what we're going to see from Bud Crawford. It didn't look as good as what we're going to see from Pacquiao at that way. It didn't look as good as what we're going to see from Errol Spence. So, that's the criticism. Right or wrong, good or bad, that's what you're going to see. And that's good for us because that means that there are a lot of guys out there. You know, Lomo can look bad. Eh, we're still going to pay to watch Lomo because he's, at this point, doing things that other people haven't done it that way. Now, we'll see what happens in the next few months, but you know you know where I'm going with that. You know, so right now it's the same thing of, you know, the, the last heavyweight fight that we saw that I'm not even going to mention how it turned out because some people may not have seen it. But also because now you're going to say, well, if he beat that guy, then he beat that guy, then he beat... And we know that doesn't work that way. But now you've got that, well, wait, why are you wanting to fight him? And if you want to get to now, you, it, it's, it, you know, because it's not as deep of a division. You have one guy that, in my opinion, right now is the cream of the crop in Tyson Fury, and the other guys are trying to find the scraps. Okay, welterweights aren't like that. So... I think Charles, you're right. He Porter has to has to look better than he can, so he can stay in not just a conversation, but so he can say, "Hey, you need to fight me next. I'm the guy. You need to fight me next." Did he do that? It's tough to do against the opponent, but still, you got to come out and say, "I am still the man." So, I hope that answered what you're asking. But I think you know he's got to he's got to make a show. Yeah. No, I think uh, the reason for the question was I think it's something that um, a lot of people have wondered about. I think it's something that needs to be addressed because people are thinking about why is this happening and does he still deserve to be in the light sure. because of uh, what he, you know, as John made a great point about not being the greatest puncher in the world, but that does not take away from his overall skill set. Right. You know, I think it's something that if you don't say it or you don't express that, then people start to look at him side eye in a certain kind of way. It's like, okay, now you want to shot at who? You fought some guy we ain't never heard of before, and you didn't really – you beat him? Did you punish him? Did you provide the blood and guts that we're looking for? Not necessarily. But now you say you're going to be ready next time? So I think I think it, it, it was a great point, and I just wanted to put that on the table so people can come back and, and take understand now as to what it takes to do what you got to do and use your – uh, the best skills that you have to be successful and compete. Well, I think it's yeah, funny. I mean, real fast, Frank. Okay. I would bet you money that if Sean Porter was on the screen with us right now, he would admit that he wanted to knock out Sebastian Formula early and be really impressive and then mm -hmm. stand there and go, see, I'm the man. He, he said, I'm still here after the fight. But he wanted to say, look, I'm the man. I knocked out this undefeated guy impressively. You know, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. He did. He he did put a pounding on him. He did beat the crap out of him. He did all those cliches. But you're right. You guys are right. But I wasn't necessarily surprised. But I understand what you're saying, Charles, because there was a part of me, as much as I loved how he was dominating, and I really liked the way the guy fights and how he's a real aggressive and in a box a little bit. I was a little disappointed that he didn't stop him. But then I had to keep reminding myself, look. He's trying to stop him. Right. You know, we, just, we love that. I always use basketball. I mean, hell, if you're not a good outside shooter, you're not a good outside shooter, man. You, know, you can keep firing him up. Boing, 
boing, you know, it it's, it's, matter, you don't right? got it, you don't got it. Right now, Charles and me, we got it. We're three point specialists, right, Charles? Yes, sir. <laughs> so yes. we're going to fire, but Sean, he's going to try to knock out a, a people. I and mean, unless the guy's got a more of a, a looser chin, this guy had a hard chin. And that's why his father said what you said, Charles, or, oh, this guy's surviving or whatever. He saw that. But so what do you do? He beat him up from pillar to post. So you, what do you see what I mean? It's almost mm-hmm. like an oxymoron. It, you won, you did everything, but you didn't do one thing. So in a sense, it's disappointing. Yeah. But that's kind of boxing. That's the way boxing is brutal as far as criticism sometimes and, and, and in the ring. Well, right. boxing is one of those rare sports where what you do is judged in increments that maybe shouldn't be point I'm making. Okay, we're, we're looking at somebody's record. He's 35-0. and 0. Well, that's impressive. But we feel compelled to add with 28 knockouts. You would think 35-0 and 0 would be enough. Right? 35-0. and 0, That's a damn good fighter. Yeah, how many knockouts do you have? Six? Uh, so then you go, well, who's he fought? What's he done? Uh, and now you start picking apart a guy that's 35 and 0. The one that I that comes to mind the, the quickest to me is Winky Wright. Well, who, what else do you want him to do? No one will fight him. He beats everybody he fights. No one will fight him. What's he supposed to do? Well, he's just not that exciting. He's just yeah, not he that wins exciting. ugly. He but he wins. Isn't but that the, wins, right? isn't that the goal? So it took him yes. And I, I'd have to go back and research. How many fights did Winky Wright have to get, have to win, before he actually got a title fight? I mean, a lot. yeah, a lot, right. And you're like, wow. Or, again, I, for some reason, I always bring, mention Glenn Johnson. Was in that mix of guys, but he wasn't the exciting guy. So, well, okay, well, we'll put our guy in to beat him because we know we can beat him, and he's kind of got a name. But, oh, he's actually winning the fight. Well, that can't happen. He's the re- he was the reliable guy, Frank. Right, Glenn exactly. Glenn was the reliable guy. Right. And there's there's always someone in there that, that you go, but he didn't knock anybody out. Well, or, right. Cornell Whitaker's another one. Well, yeah, but he just, he ran and didn't knock people out. Well, no, he didn't run, but okay, I know what you're trying to say. He was just a defensive fighter. Eh, you know. And you get to the point where we start adding that other category to it, which isn't a bad thing to add. But we forget 35 and 0 isn't that bad. You know, Sean Porter's record is pretty darn good considering who he's fought. But if he's not a knockout guy, he's not a knockout guy. Is that such a bad thing? You know, I wrote an article kind of along the theme when Joseph Parker beat Andy Ruiz in the rematch, and, and people were upset, and, and I understood what he was doing. <clears throat> the point was to win. The, and, and, and win and continue his career. If he got knocked out again by Andy Ruiz, he might have been done. So he did what he had to do, and people were critical. I was impressed. He found a way he had to do to win. It, 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 it made his, it, 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 it advanced his career. Now we can talk about Fury. If he had been knocked out by Andy Ruiz again, we would be talking about Fury right. and Joshua right. down the road. So I understood the big picture. I mean, obviously it wasn't the most impressive win, and you could say what you want about it, but I understood where he was thinking. His thinking was, look, this particular fight, I'm not going to trade with this guy. His hands are faster, and he caught me, and and, and I'm very vulnerable to that. So I'm going to live to fight another day. I'm going to make a lot of money. I mean, I understood that, so I ended up defending him and catching a lot of criticism for it. Was your fight? <laughs> I don't buy that a bit. It's fine. But I was looking at it from another point of view. That I understood where Parker was coming from, uh, Parker, where uh, Joshua was coming from, and, and he did the job. Well, Charles, I'm going to put it to you because I know once I make this reference, you're going to go, uh, okay. I wait to see how he reacts. I wait to see how he reacts. <laughs> he always groans now. <laughs> Klitschko. Uh, oh. Which one? <laughs> the one minus the jaw. Uh, minus Vladimir. the chin. Vladimir. Vladimir. What, what do you want? What do you want me to say about uh, that? That's what all you? I had to say, and I figured you're going to run with that. Okay, it's the, it's the idea of <laughs> I'm going to win fights, 
without trying to put myself in harm's way because I don't have a chin. I can win fights looking good because I'm big enough, I'm strong, I can keep the guys away, and I can rack up points that way. I'm a skilled enough fighter, a skilled enough boxer. I can do all these things. But if someone lands a close one on me, I'm done for. Does that make him less of a fighter, less of a champion? When you know that if someone really, I'm assuming you know, if someone slaps you a good one, you're going down for the count. Yeah, but it, but it comes back to that means then they're still kind of what I call cherry picking opponents. And I'm a, sure. I mean, here's my thing. It happens throughout the sport. I think they they need to just quit lying and quit trying to say who's cherry picking, who's not. You went from Floyd Mayweather. They said he cherry picked. And then here comes uh, Oscar De La Hoya doing the same thing for uh, for a uh, Canelo. I mean, it's always been about that. I think Bud Crawford kind of cherry picking right now. Now he's up to one forty seven. That's just me. But I'm just saying that it happens. It has happened. Uh, uh, Klitschko same way. And uh, I think his brother was just his brother was different because his brother was kind of like you know what? I got this guy with me. I got my corner. We believe we can fight anybody and beat anybody. In the right circumstances, what I'm doing, but uh, yeah, I think it's been going on, and I and I don't fault, I don't fault them for fault them for picking and choosing to be safe, because everybody wants to remain the champion. I just want you to be honest about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's all I want. If you if you don't want to see that, you don't want that smoke. Like Keith Thurman right now. I mean, he finally got one because I think he really believe something about Bud Crawford that he can because of his size I think he believes if he gets a really good fight under his belt that he can really give Crawford a little bit of the business because he hasn't really been at 147 and now that he called him out and he also knows that's big money so if he loses what the hell I can go off and retire live with my wife make some kids so it's a lot in the in that in that that uh that that uh that that talk and he really has not come for Spence anymore. You know, he's talking about it. Well, if it happens, great, but he's not calling me now. He even will fight Sean Porter again because he thinks he can beat him. So, you know, it's kind of one of those stories at the end. You can tell the story how you want to, but it's all going to come to light. And I think he has a reasoning behind what he's doing. He's talking about his hands are still kind of messed up, but, uh, He'll take the risk, and others will take a risk if it's worth the money. If the money's there and they they get the prestige uh, as far as being on the stage, I think they'll do it. But it's like if you know I have a chance of maybe taking an L or maybe not looking as great, I'm not going to risk that just because. You got to pay me, pay me, or or you have to... Give me, make it worth my while. John, I, I just want to say this real quick. I'm impressed that he only choked on saying something almost positive about Klitschko for about three seconds. So and he managed to get well, off the subject, go to something else. So that was very yeah, impressive. That was good. But see, I, I, I know where he was coming from. And I, I, I love it that you mentioned Klitschko because I think my theory with Klitschko always was that, yeah, he, he's probably going to get more credit later on and at some point but his fights and this is this, i hate to sound like a typical uh yahoo here but you know his fights weren't very exciting a lot of times hbo right. wouldn't even telecast them and i think with klitsko when you're a big dude like him when you're six six whatever and you and you look like paul bunyan and you fight like a a, a, a flyweight hanging behind your jab and just stabbing guys. People don't like that with heavyweights. Right. They still want the heavyweights to bomb. And that hurt him. But your point was good, Frank. Emmanuel Stewart took him under his wing and said, look, we know your chin is suspect, so we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to fight and win without getting clipped. So just like I was saying about uh, uh, Joshua, it was brilliant strategy. He yeah. won. He was champion for years and years. And then the other thing that's great about Klitschko, and that's why I hope he, he was talking about coming back, and I'm so glad he didn't. I won't say great, but what was really good that Klitschko, his last fight, to me, with Joshua was a barn burner. I mean, it wasn't the most exciting heavyweight fight, but he came to fight 
He knocked Joshua down. He almost won. And then he went down on, on, on his shield. Uh, and then the fight got stopped. And, and, and that was a great way. I mean, I had more respect for him in that fight because he really came to win that fight. Right. He didn't come right. to hang behind the jab. He, he had sparred with Joshua and he knew that if he could hit him with that right hand, and he did, and he knocked him down, and it was really a, a exciting fight. So, Klitschko, if your last fight defines you, he went out good. It's kind of funny you could go out on a loss, but right, but it, went out, it was yeah, better right. than some of those wins, you know, over guys that we can't even name anymore. Well, I'm I'm gonna play the name game with Charles <laughs> until we. It's right, right out Charles. of time. Charles looks at me over there. Charles is getting um, mad. Look at no, that. I, no, I no. Uh, <laughs> Remember, he's a little edgy today, Frank. He's Remember, a little edgy, know. grumpy old man. Um, see a no, hand I, come I, up behind I, Frank. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> All right, but but seriously, there there are there as we were in a positive mode there about things that we wanted to see. There are also a few fighters that, as you mentioned, you know. Klitsch goes over in, in Austria, Germany, wherever the heck he, he was at, where they weren't showing the fights. Another one that comes to mind, and I, I kind of like the guy, but I know Charles wasn't really a big fan, Joe Calzaghe. Kind of the same thing of... Yeah, see, I knew that would get him going. I knew that would get him going. Go ahead, Charles. Go ahead. I, I, that's all I had to say. I, I I mean, it's just, John, it's one of those things, though, that you hear about this and you hear about guys being across the pond or wherever they were, but it's like, just show me something where you go, this is where he was great, right? I, I, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm naive, I'm ignorant, whatever, maybe I didn't see his best fights. I just want to see one of them, and I, I want to be entertained, and maybe I haven't you know, been privy to that. Uh, one of the things, I guess you could say the same thing about, I've always wanted to see maybe a classic Jimmy Young fight, you know, besides the one or two that we heard about. i like to see a classic Jimmy Young fight. But Calzaghe, I mean, for all that they said he was great and he beat who he's supposed to beat, I just wanted to see him fight against somebody that I consider top quality caliber talent during his heyday. And I'm not sure if I saw that. Well, Kessler, Kessler was at. But then, yeah. but then again, I mean, if you say Kessler, but then again, if I'm that novice knucklehead, don't know much about boxing, and then I'm gonna go, who's that guy? Who? Yeah, yeah, who's I, that guy? You know what I'm saying? European, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have came to America sooner if he really wanted to make a mark. He or came they late. Or they should have offered some, some someone some money to come to him. And I think sure. that's what it was because you had opportunities and you had uh, talent that he could have faced that he really would have got a lot, a lot of recognition from. And I think that, that where that's where for me and other people it's like, okay, you waited till everybody was old as hell, then you fought him. Well he well, beat he beat Chris Eubank he beat Chris Eubank Sr. out right. there in the UK. And yeah, right. His big fight, his big his coming out party was against Jeff Lacey, if you guys remember. Yeah. And right. Lacey was knocking everybody out and, and Calzaghe dominated him. Uh, you're right. There's always going to be questions about him, but see here we differ, Charles. I really think he was the real deal. I do. I really think he was that good. It's just unfortunate that he didn't get to show it. I would have loved to see him pound the crap out of Carl Froch because I think he would have done it because Froch annoys me with his boorish <laughs> ego sometimes. But I think Calzaghe would have just kicked the living crap out of Carl Froch most of the fight, and he might even got knocked down by the always relentless Froch. But he'd have beat him, in my opinion. Him and Andre Ward would have been a hell of a fight. See, and that's that's what I, I mean, and maybe that's the American coming out of me, right? Maybe I'm too Americanized on that area at that era and during that time. I wanted him to come over here to fight our contenders. That's all I wanted. One or two guys. And then if you prove me wrong, I'll be the first guy to bow down and give him his love because maybe I didn't see enough of him. But I wanted to see that guy. And I don't think maybe it was his promoters, maybe it was some people, his handlers or whatever that didn't make that happen or didn't think that he needed to to, to do that. Remember, Charles, remember, he beat Hopkins when Hopkins was still beating a lot of guys. He, Hopkins beat Kelly Pavlik like there was no tomorrow, and Calzaghe beat him, and he got knocked down the first round. Then he fought Roy Jones. Now, you're going to argue they were past their primes. I don't know what 
Bernard Hopkins prime was anymore. I mean, the guy right. mentally was about 50, <laughs> but he's amazing. But Roy, and Roy Jones, too. Roy Jones was past it, obviously, but Kawasaki beat him really easy, which was kind of stunning. I uh, think- and, and Hopkins. So it's just that they were, I'm sorry, Frank, they're just, sorry. it's because they were older and past it, and that's where he doesn't get it. So it's like, oh, you only fight them when they're past it. I get what you're doing here. So that hurt. that hurts him. I, I think the thing. Yeah, I, and, 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 I mean, I think for me it does because I'm like. There you go. See? Go ahead, Frank. Well, I, I think it, you said the exact same. I was thinking the exact same thing. The, the American side of us is that we expect them to come to America, which, you know, you're a world champion. But if you're a world champion, and this is the problem that I have with the sanctioning bodies and all that fun crud, is that. Put them together, whether in Thailand, Indonesia, Australia, whatever. You know, if the contender is from Timbuktu and the champion is from Sweden, they need to fight. If that's what we're going to determine you to be a world champion to be. Now, again, I understand Calzaghe stayed where he was. Klitschko stayed where they were. You know, uh, Felix Sturm, you know, uh, all those, uh, Kessler, most of them stayed in their region, which is cool. That's where they're from. They're the champion. They get to pick and choose. But then put our guys, ours being the Americans, put them on a boat, on a plane, on a helicopter, and go fight them there. But the fight should still happen because you're world champion. Yeah. We don't flip it around as, you know, Ricky Hatton called out Floyd Mayweather. He got his butt kicked for it, but he called him out and said, you want it? Come on over and get it. Okay. He made the he made the attempt. You know, that's... And, and- yeah, he- he, yeah. he came over to America and fought Hopkins and Roy Jones, but you're you're you're, yeah. you're you're right. It would have been his legend or his legacy or whatever you want to call it would have been much better if he had maybe done that earlier yeah. or fought some younger guys or some like other than Lacey. Or, it would have definitely yeah. helped him. I mean, you end up forty-seven and zero with thirty-five knockouts, incredibly yeah. impressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's always going to have a little bit of not an asterisk, but a little bit of a. Because that didn't happen, and that that's unfortunate. Because, like I said, I thought he was a real deal, and he was mm-hmm. talking about busy, and he was throwing punches all the time. Right. And, but, I, and but, I take your word for it. If I can, I mean, I take your word for it because you saw him, and I know you watched a lot of boxing. Like you said, unfortunately, I wasn't able to see him um, at the highest level against you know over here. But uh, I would say the same thing for me is the same thing with Prince Nassim. You know, he's a Hall of Fame boxer, and I and I said to myself. Yeah, okay, he, he accomplished it, but damn. Yeah, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting over here going like. I was that way too about him, Charles. I was yeah. saying, like, okay, so what? Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, and I, and I think that's part of it where you just want to see those guys uh, connect. Uh, again, I mean, Andre Ward is one of your favorite fighters. And uh, I'm telling you, if it had not been for that Super Six, I wouldn't know who the hell Andre Ward was. But once I saw him, and you mentioned about maybe not being the greatest puncher, he was a survivor and a fighter. He knew how to win. Yeah. And, and, you know, even watching the first fight with the, uh, uh, was it uh, Shucks? I can't even think of the name right now. The guy that Canelo beat. Oh, you know? Kovalev? Yeah, Kovalev. I was at that fight, and I thought he won. I thought he won. Because I After thought he was knocked down in the first round. Yeah, yeah. I was right there going, oh, she's in trouble. That's it. I thought he was crafty, my crafty word. I watched it all in force and the fact that he survived. But the whole point of it is that that's a guy that, I mean, you said you mentioned Sean Porter. That's a guy that I gained tremendous respect for. And, and I made it my business to watch him fight in person at least once because I was that enamored with him. I was that impressed by the tools that he used and he came from the bottom in the standpoint of he was the lower guy on the totem pole uh in that super six and he came yep. through like yeah i'm winning and now i'm gonna continue to win and there and other guys that i think ducked him i don't care what they say triple g did not want that damn smoke that <laughs> i don't go to my grave with that <laughs> he didn't want no that he smoke. didn't he did he not didn't. want that smoke from andre Wolf. No. No. Well, it, it's no. It, it, you mentioned the guy, and we're gonna get out of here in a second. Here, you mentioned Prince Nassim, who Ugh. 
when when yeah when you saw his fights and you went i don't know i'm not sure what i'm seeing here you know the dancing and the backflips in the ring and all that and and then he wins easily you're thinking is he good i don't know but he's he's winning he easy he's good yeah he's okay okay so and I, I just went back and looked you know fought kevin kelly fought wayne mccullough okay but when he got to marco antonio barrera and lost that one it's like you know, this may not be for me. One more fight and I'm done. That's the telling thing to me. When you when you when you fight the tough guy and the going gets tough, you know, what was that a Billy Ocean? You song? get going. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like and, and he got gone. Going. Yeah. And he got <laughs> gone. So yeah, and, exactly. and that's that's the part that I don't like. You know, and again, hey, he made some money, he, he retired healthy, he got what he wanted out of the sport, hopefully. I don't know. You know, but those are the kind of things that that I think separate what we what we're talking about. And again, at the end of this fight, I know we talked about this fight two days ago. It seems like, but at the end of this fight, you're looking at it going, Delahoya is still Delahoya, win or lose, he's still going to go after it, you know. And the the fact that I wasn't always a big fan doesn't erase the fact that he went after the the brass ring repeatedly, you know. Trinidad's still going to fight. You know, I'm, I'm a title holder. I'm still going to fight. I'm still going to go after it. That's, I think, the the main thing about what we keep talking about is these guys are in it for more than just, I'm just here. I'm good at it. You know, certain people are. You know, I'm good at it, and I'm just going to stick around. But rarely do they say, okay, even when we talk about George Foreman a, a little while ago, it's like, I lost Ali, and, and people could have seen yeah, he's done. There were still more fights there. And then a whole other career after that. So I think the whole thing is that we're looking at part of what makes these fights great are the fighters and the people that are involved. And I think we have respect for them and what they do and how they go about their business and the career and the legacy they've left behind. So that's why I'm kind of looking at picking and choosing a couple more and saying, who do we need to, to recognize that maybe we overlook? So, Frank, we need to watch uh, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. You know, we mm-hmm. should watch him against Jake yeah, LaMotta, the St. Yeah. Valentine's Day Massacre. Yeah. I mean, you can argue that Sugar Ray wasn't even in his prime then when he fought Jake LaMotta, but he shows you what <laughs> – to me, he's the greatest fighter ever. Yeah. He is. I, and I, he I, shows it, you, right? He could punch. He could move. He could – he was tough as nails. He'd rumble with you. He'd stand there and rumble. And we should watch that even though it gets a little one-sided. Uh, just, just to, we got to get a, a fight with with uh, Sugar Ray. And let me just say one thing about Andre Ward. I think what people forget about him is when he fought Kovalev, you're talking about Charles, mm-hmm. Kovalev was destroying everybody. Mm-hmm. Yes. Remember? People yes. forget that. He was dominating. He was. People were scared to fight him. When he fought Juan pa- uh, John Pascal, I was like, "Oh, he was looking like yeah. he and he'd already killed somebody already." Kovalev. So when Andre Ward, what he did that impressed me more than anything he did in his whole career was he was losing that fight, and Virgil Hunter was in his corner, pumping him up, if you remember. And mm-hmm. Virgil worked him. He's known him since he was nine, and he was telling him, "Come on now, you got to get. You're losing. I'm telling you, you're." And I'd never seen Virgil as much as I'd been watching them and hanging around the gym watching those two guys fascinating people he was really intense and andre even with all the success he listened and he kept he just started coming which was one of those fascinating things like like almost a little bit like trinidad but kovalev was trying to keep him off but andre ward started going to the body that changed everything yeah and those that this ties into what you said frank those are the kind of fighters that you can't help but admire right when they're down like that and they're down in the first round and they're losing and they find a way to come back, that pretty much epitomizes to me what sport is about, not just boxing. You've seen that in football, baseball, basketball. A guy gets injured. He comes all the way back. But in boxing, it's all happening in that little bit, that 60 minutes. Right. So you're losing. You've been knocked down two or three times. you got to find a way, like Juan Manuel Marquez did a few weeks ago. He found a way to get his way back in that fight, and that was just so impressive. And that's probably thing like I do because you can never count a guy out, and 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 that was an example of it. Charles, you were about to say. 
I just want one thing is before we go, I just want one rematch. I want uh, Jeff Horn versus Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> Oh, the poor teacher. He's just going to go back to teach, and that's it. Well, it's look, done. Is, I mean, that's the one. I'm like, I, I'm sorry, but you talk about pumped up, and I know what they did, what they was trying to do, Bob Aram, but uh, you just don't. Leave it alone now. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Go, go back to teaching. You got yep. your change. You got Jeez. your little notoriety. Let, let's leave it there, buddy. Want a title. Yeah, let's, leave it. let's leave it right there. Yep. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I'm not even going to get into that because there's just <laughs> there's so many things. Uh, we we mentioned uh, Sugar Ray Robinson. If yeah. if you're paying attention, there's a reason why that's the open of the of the segment. So Sugar Ray Robinson is right. open. So yeah, so I love that. Frank. Yeah, can I say one thing? Can I say one thing? Probably um, not, but you can try to say one thing. One one thing. Here we go. <laughs> You're joking. Anyway, I kill you last. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the Sugar Ray Robinson, I, I've always heard about him. I've always seen some things. I know how great he was. But somebody sent me a documentary, I think it was, when they passed along, and I watched that. And after I watched that, I literally said, I apologize. Because I don't think I had seen enough of him to know how great he was and how exciting he was. In regards from a style point, right. I I did not have a great enough appreciation when it came from pound for pound, and I apologize to him, and I'm gonna do it publicly to say, I'm sorry, sir, because my God. <laughs> my yeah, you know God. what? We can we can watch Sugar Ray against Randy Turpin the rematch. That's a great yeah. fight, guys. If you've ever watched it, I mean, Sugar Ray was losing again. There's one of those ideas. He was a thing. He was cut. He was losing, and he had to go for it, and he went for it. And, and he had to, and, and and he did it. But yeah, Sugar Ray Robinson just—he was amazing talent. He I, was. I watched him. I was like, man, mm -hmm. what the hell was I thinking? Yeah. Yeah, well, he was we, amazing. We, we've got a few ideas, and again, unless one of us decides not to do this show in the next three months, I think we have plenty of options. So, and not saying one of us doesn't <laughs> decide to do it, but. I, you know, we have plenty of things we can. Did we do. get renewed, Frank, by the network? We, 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 yeah, we the network is the renewed? network is backing us wholeheartedly. We've been renewed for another thirteen okay. minutes. So, uh, so <laughs> yeah, we, we have plenty of things we can do. Plenty of ways we can go. Uh, for those of you that liked and subscribed already, our little graphic at the beginning was cool. Instead of waiting until the end to ask you to like and subscribe, we decided to do it at the beginning. Somebody mentioned that to me. I don't remember who. Um, so Somebody. We're, we're out there, and um, we're having fun, folks. Just join us. Tell others. Enjoy yourselves. You know, we you can do it on radio. Watch us in the background. It doesn't matter. But we're going to find a, a few more fights. And just when as we have more things coming along, we're going to talk about the current stuff as well. So, gentlemen, thank you once again. We're having a blast. Enjoy the day. Uh, someone's got a holiday, birthday, celebration, or something coming up. We won't say which one it is. 127. And we'll go from there. So, <laughs> <laughs> See, grumpy old man face what? again. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, folks. I know, I know. No. <laughs>